Now the hope is to both start and finish the bridges before sunrise. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Around 5 a.m., the bridges are now close enough to the opposite bank that the Confederates have just enough light so they can start to see the U.S. engineers building the bridges. And in fact, the Confederates had made it a, a, a specific decision to wait until the engineers had gotten far enough across the river that they were easier targets and that they had committed a significant amount of material they couldn't simply abandon their bridging positions. So as several of those bridges are now, in some cases, almost halfway or more than halfway across the river, they open fire on the engineers as, uh, somewhere around past uh, 5 a.m. in the morning. And the engineers being fired upon by Confederates dug into the riverside and entrenched into the buildings along the riverfront are going to be ripped to absolute ribbons. While the Federal artillery here on the heights had made it impossible for Lee to place large formations of infantry in the town. He didn't need to have large formations of infantry in the town. He didn't have large formations of infantry in the town. He had dispersed formations of infantry in the town. Little pockets, little cells of two, four, five, six men in a building, in a foxhole, in a rifle pit, dispersed here and there. All they needed to do was to be able to shoot a couple of engineers on a cup on three or four bridges every now and again. They didn't actually need that many men to make the building of the bridges impossible. Even with the best artillerymen the Army of the Potomac could arrange against them, even with the most accurate guns the Army could put, uh, drag up on top of the hill, the artillerymen are firing through fog, are firing through their own gunpowder smoke, are firing at the extreme realistic ranges of their guns, are fighting the inherent inaccuracies of black powder and cast iron projectiles. Civil War artillery simply is not capable of doing what it is being asked of doing here. <clears throat> so, someone gets the wild idea of like, hey, we've got a bunch of unused pontoon boats because the bridges aren't done. And we've got a bunch of infantry that aren't doing anything because they can't go into town because the bridges aren't done. So why don't we take some of those infantry who aren't doing anything because the bridges aren't done into the pontoon boats that aren't doing anything because the bridges aren't done and have them row across the river because they can't walk across the river because the bridges aren't done. And have them take the riverfront the old fashioned way. So all told, uh, the US Army is gonna shove the better part of five regiments across the river in uh, these pontoon boats, which, um, you know, wouldn't you love to assault across a river um, in, a, in a wooden boat uh, designed to basically not move while getting shot at? Uh, for the record, uh, no one has been trained to do this. This is not in the manuals. Uh, believe it or not, European armies actually do train to do things like this from time to time. Not us. We didn't train to do this. We were making this stuff up. Um, so we're going to show five regiments of infantry, the better part of five regiments of infantry, across the river to take the riverfront the old-fashioned way. House to house, pit to pit, hand to hand. Making up urban warfare tactics as we went along. So by the time the bridges are built, the city is secured, and the uh, Confederates have, and the U.S. And the city is actually under U.S. control. Burnside's plan is in shambles. Now, remember at the beginning, I said the entire reason Burnside is coming through Fredericksburg, right, is he's trying to move fast, right? 
had you pull out your phones and find where all the highways were, right? Well, this was the number one highway, right? He's trying to move fast, right? Well, he's not moving particularly fast anymore, right? So plan one was to get across the river before Lee even knew what was happening. Well, that didn't happen. Plan B was to try and cross the river somewhere else. We had to give that, that plan up too. Plan C had been to cross the river so quickly that he could hit Lee's army and surprise it and hopefully catch it before it was fully concentrated. Well, that clearly hasn't worked either. Because as the day, as the sun sets on December 11th, Stonewall Jackson's corps is starting to pull up into its defensive positions down at Prospect Hill. And any chances of Lee's, of, of catching Lee's army, even slightly understaffed, um, well, that's largely been lost. So we're now three planes down the hole, and uh, Burnside's going to have to come up with plan D. And while even I, and, and while I even call myself a bit of a Burnside apologist, if there is something that Burnside is, even I have to admit that Burnside is not super great at, it's improvising. 